All right, welcome to part three of the drone tutorial. So we're just gonna continue right where we left off here. So the first thing we're gonna do is change it so that our camera looks a little more like a drone camera and a little less like a normal camera. So to do that, um, you can actually just play around with the post-process settings inside of the scene capture component. There's all sorts of them and I don't know what all of them really do, but um, the ones that I've changed are the tent. So if you search for tent, I think that's what it's called. Um, yeah, scene color tint, this one, we wanna check this, and then we wanna change this to whatever you want, obviously. I, I had it set to like a kind of bluish color. So if we play it and we look now, you can see it's kind of blue. Maybe that's a little extreme, but you get the point. Um, and then the other thing that I did to make it look a little nicer is, oh man, what is it called? Um, something with jitter in it. Yeah, so lens image effect. Let me actually find that. So lens, uh, where's image effect? Image effect, here we go. So this gain jitter and this gain intensity are actually pretty, a pretty nice effect when you're going for like a drone type of camera thing. So if you bump both these up to like 0.8 or something, again, you can play with these values. Let me come back. You can see it kind of adds that jittery camera or that like security camera looking effect to it. Um, like so. And then we also remember it's also doing a blur because technically the resolution of the render target is a lot smaller than the resolution of where it's rendering to. So that's why the scene actually looks a little bit blurry as well. Okay, and so the final thing we want to do here is set it up so that it's calculating the altitude and the distance that you're looking. So to do that, we can do that all inside of the drone. So if we go to the event graph here, we want to do that inside of the tick because we need to do it each frame, obviously. Um, so we can say event tick. Um, but one little optimi optimization we can do here is we can we can make it so that it only does this when it's actually possessed. So that way, if it's not possessed, obviously we don't need to be calculating these values. So we can drag in our drone state here and we can do a switch. And then we can do it only if it's possessed. So we want to do two line traces here, one that goes from the drone down into the world, and that's going to be our altitude. And then we want to do another one that goes from the camera location um, into the world along the camera's forward vector, and that's going to get us our distance. So we'll say, actually, let's make a little sequence node here. So we're going to hook this up to possessed, and we're going to do a line trace uh, by channel. So the first line trace, let's do the altitude first. So the altitude is going to be starting at our get actor location. And we want it to end at the actor location minus some value. So we'll say vector minus vector. And this will be minus, uh, let's do like 10,000. That's probably plenty far. And if we are like higher than 10,000 units or we're not above anything, then we'll be printing out like NA for not available. So it's fine if it's if it never actually hits something. Um, and so what we wanna do here is we want to drag off of this Boolean and do a select node and make sure you get this one down here, the select. Because if we didn't hit anything, then we wanna set the altitude to like negative one or something. So that way we know like it's a bad value. So over here on the right, or on the left rather, let's add a variable for our um, altitude. And I'm gonna call this altitude in meters because it's gonna be in meters, just so we have a unit. And we'll make it a float and we'll make it private. And then we'll just duplicate this and we'll call this the distance in meters. We're gonna need this as well. And okay, so back here, um, if it's true, meaning we we hit something, then we wanna take this and we wanna break it and then hit this little drop down. And we wanna use this distance value. So we, we could just plug it directly into here, but again, we wanna convert this to meters. And by default, at least, Unreal uses centimeters. You can find that if you go up here and you search for units so you see default settings um, the distance length is set to centimeters um, if you have this set to something else then you'll have to do a different conversion here but by default it's it's centimeters i believe for everybody 
So because it's in centimeters, we just want to do a divide by 100 in order to convert it into meters, like so. And we can hook that to true. If it's false, like I said, meaning we didn't hit anything, we'll just set it to negative one. And then we'll set our altitude in meters to that. And there we go. And so the next thing we need to do is our distance calculation. So that's like how far away is the thing that we're looking at. So let's get this over. So again, we want to do another line trace. We'll say line trace by channel. And we will drag this. Oops. I didn't want to do that drag from then one down to here, like so. So we have some room. It should look like this. And then we're just going to zoom in down here. Um, so for this one, we want to start it at the camera location, which is our scene capture. So drag this in and we'll say get world location for our start. And then our end is going to be our world location plus some amount of units along our forward vector. So we can say vector plus vector and hook that up to the end. And so we want to add, um, some amount of units in the direction of our forward vector. So we can drag off of this again and say get, uh, get forward vector. And we just want to multiply that by some large number, which is however far we want the trace to go. So we can say float times. And I'm just going to use 10,000 again, since that's the trace of our other one. So 10,000. And then that goes into here. And then just like we did before, um, I'm actually just going to copy this because it's basically the same. So we'll just copy these nodes and bring it down here and hook that up and so hook that up and hook that up except this time we want to change altitude in meters to distance in meters okay so let's just for testing purposes real quick let's change this bottom one the draw debug type to uh for hmm Let's do four one frame, and then let's do four one frame on this one as well. So we can actually see these guys and make sure we have it up, set up correctly. So if we press play and we press F, and we kind of look at the drone from our player's point of view, you can see it's doing two line traces. It's doing one in the direction that it's looking, and it's doing no, another one in the, you know, basically straight down from it. Uh, but one little bug you'll notice is that it can actually look directly through the player which is not good because we want them to be able to look at the player and get the distance. And so to fix that, we can change the trace visibility channel to camera and we can change this one to camera as well. And it's just the matter of how they have their trace channel set up. The visibility one just happens to ignore the player, but the camera one doesn't, it pretty much doesn't ignore anything. So now if we run this and we look at the player, you can see it's now hitting the player. Let me do it from this side so you can see. You can see our line trace is hitting our player, which is cool. All right, so now that we have this, we just want to take those values and display them on the drone's screen. So if we come back here and we open up our drone screen widget, we can add those values. So to do this, um, let's see here. Let's add a uh, let's add a text. Let's first of all, yeah, let's add that text at the top here that we had before. So we drag this onto the canvas panel, and then we want to set this to top middle, and then let's set it to size to content, and then position zero. Uh, size doesn't matter because we're sizing to content, but the alignment, we want to set it to 0 0.5, and then we want to change this to drone camera, and then I'm going to turn off the bold and set it to just regular, and then we'll bump this down to like 18 or something like that. And then maybe let's move it down like 10 from the top or whatever. You can change this to be however you want. Um, and then let's also give it a little bit of an outline, maybe like just one. So it has a little backdrop to it. So that's our little header thing there. And then the next thing we want is the altitude and the distance. So we're going to add those values right here. So we're going to make a horizontal box, drag it onto the canvas panel. And then let's go ahead and anchor this to the center as well. And then we'll say zero, zero, and then we'll check size to content. And then inside of this horizontal box, we're gonna add two text boxes. So we'll add one text box here and then another text box. And so for this one, we wanna change it to uh, ALT, 
oops, LT for altitude. And then for this one, we're going to be binding to this one, but for now we can just set it to like, you know, 17.56 or whatever, um, just to kind of show us what it's going to look like. And then we want to take this horizontal box and just kind of drag it. Oops, not that. Uh, take the horizontal box. Is it going to let me drag it? Oh, come on. Let me drag it. There we go. Drag it like over here. And then let's change the font size. So I'm gonna select both of these guys and change the size down to like 16 maybe. And then I'm also gonna make these regular font. And then maybe we can add a little bit of spacing in there as well. So let's select this altitude guy. And then on the right, let's add like 10 padding. And then we can just take this horizontal box and duplicate it. And then we'll move this guy down here below it. Something like, oops, sometimes this dragon's a little weird. There we go, like that. Uh, for this one, we want to change it to DST for distance. And then let me add a little bit more padding to this top one so that they line up better. Uh, maybe 13, maybe, there we go. Uh, okay, so now we just need to bind to these values. So if you select this top one here, we can say bind. And then we want to say, create binding. And so back here, it's created a nice binding function for us. But the issue is that we need access to the drone in order to get those variables, right? Those two variables that we just created. So in order to get access to the drone, we could do it right here. Um, but the thing is, is that this gets called every single frame. So we wanna make, you know, we wanna, the, the stuff we put in here, we wanna be as minimal with it as possible. So we'll actually do this in the begin play. We'll save a reference to the drone so that we don't have to get it every time. So we can delete all of this, or sorry, not begin play, but initialize. So if you right click and you say event on initialize, we can say get owning player, and then we can say get controlled on so in this case, the controlled pawn is going to be our drone. So we can just cast to drone. And then we can take this and promote it to a variable. And we will just call this our drone. And we can hook this up. Now, or actually, so let's set this drone to private first and foremost. Okay. So one problem we're going to run into here, um, and if you've watched my tutorials, you probably already know exactly what I'm about ready to do. Um, pretty much whenever you do anything inside of initialize, you have to add a delay of zero. So again, I'm going to left click and hold down, or I'm going to hold down D and left click to create a delay and set it to zero. And again, this is just like an ordering thing of Unreal. Like this gets called like one frame too early. I don't really know why that's the case or why they don't fix that. But if you do this, then everything will be initialized after this runs and then we'll be good to go. So this is what we need to do in the initialize. So that way we can save the drone. And then back here inside of our get text, let's first of all rename this to get altitude text. So we want to take that drone, so we can drag in our drone, and we can say, oh, we need to get access to those values, right? So real quick, let's go back to our drone, because if you remember, we made these private, so that way we can't modify them outside, but now we have no way to get them. So we just need to make a couple little functions here. We'll just take a second. So make a function and let's call it um, get out to can't spell get altitude in oh my gosh get altitude in meters and then we'll make this pure and const and then we'll return our altitude in meters like so and then we'll just duplicate this guy because we want to make one more, we call it get distance in meters, except this time we will obviously return our distance in meters. And then let's change the return name as well to be distance in meters, like so. So now we have our two functions for getting them. So now we can go back to our drone screen widget and we can say get altitude in meters. And so we want to take this value and we want to convert it to a text value. Now you can just do this and you'll you can see it will do that for you, but we want to do a couple of special things with it because we want to adjust these values, but we also want to change it to NA if 
the value of this is negative one. We don't just want to print out negative one. So I'm actually going to make a little helper function for this over here on the left that we'll be using in both our get functions. And we'll just call this meters to text. And so inside of this function, we want to take in an input pin that's a float. And this will be called meters. And then it's going to output the text. So we'll add an output parameter. And it's going to be of type uh, text. And we will just call this the text, I guess. OK, so if you drag from here to here, that will create this first node that we need. And then we can hit this drop down button. And so we want to change it to have a maximum frac fractional digit of two. So that way there's no more than two fractions. And again, you can set these values to be whatever you want. But that's just what I want for uh, this tutorial. And then if it's if this value is less than zero, then we actually don't want to do this. We just want to return NA. So we're going to drag off of this first of all and say float less than. And so if it's less than zero, we'll do a select node here, uh, select. So if it's less than zero, then we well so hold on let's uh let's see here let's drag us into the true and then I can explain it better and then hook this up like that. Oops 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 hold on. <laughs> okay this is what I meant to do. So if the meters is less than zero, oh no we want greater than zero. Sorry I'm messing this up all sorts of ways. <laughs> I'm getting tired here. Okay, this is what we want. If meters is greater than zero, then we want to use the actual value of it, right? Because if it's like seven, eight, nine, fifteen, then we want to actually print out that value, right? But if it's less than zero, meaning that the line trace didn't hit anything, so it's going to be negative one, then we just want to print out, you know, something like NA, right? Or something that says this line trace didn't hit anything. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Sorry if I probably confused everybody there for a second. So we want to take this meters to text. And we can set it to pure and const as well. And then now back in our get altitude, we can just say meters to text, hook that up and hook that up. And then we can do the exact same thing for the destination. And it'll be a lot easier this time because we already have that function. So if we select the destination, we can hit bind, create binding. We'll call this get distance text. And then just like we did before, we can say drone and then we can say get distance in meters. And then we can change this meters to a text. So we'll say meters to text. And we'll hook that up like so. All right, so now if we run this, let's see. Press play, go over to our drone, press F. And you can see it's printing out our altitude. So when we go up and down, it prints out our altitude. And then depending on where we look, it prints out the distance to where we're looking. And let's say, for example, if we look up at the sky, you can see the distance prints out in A. And if we fly over nothing here, like we are right now, so now they both say in A. So that's what that in A does. Um, and of course, now we can come back here and back in our drone, we can turn off those line traces. Oops. All right, we can set this to none and none. I'll save. And there we go. So everything is pretty much working. And I think that concludes this tutorial. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I also have a Discord link in the description of this video. If you guys want to join there, it's a bunch of game dev people, really, for the most part. Or if you have questions, feel free to join. And like I said before, I also have a Patreon. If you guys want to support me there, that's always super appreciated. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.